call Lord Moylan. I am uh, very grateful to my noble friend, the Minister, and to other noble lords who have spoken um, in this group, particularly the noble Earl, uh, Lord Caith Ness, Lord Robotham, and Lord Mancroft. And uh, very um, uh, pleased that the noble Lord, uh, Lord Trees, has felt able to express support for uh, the Amendment 57 in my name. But I'd also like at this occasion to thank the Minister for uh, uh, handling us so well. I mean, this has been two afternoons, two, two afternoons of, I think, extremely informative and at the same time very good-natured debate. And he has taken everything that we have uh, thrown at him and he has come back with a dazzling display of, of, of uh, intellect and sympathy. Um, and though it's mildly regrettable that he keeps... Uh, the only philosophers he quotes are all French, and I think they need to have a, have a closer look at, at that for the future. Um, I, I, I will, on my own behalf, just um, um, uh, uh, apologise uh, for expressing myself badly if I conveyed to the noble uh, Baroness Lady Bakewell of Hardington Mandeville that I didn't think dogs could feel uh, pleasure. I, I don't think that, was what I, that isn't what I intended to say at all, uh, in fact, one of my amendments uh, specifically uh, preserved mammals as part of the scope of the bill. What I was trying to say was that while we can certainly understand pleasure and indeed pain in a dog or in the higher mammals, it's very difficult to understand what that means uh, in any meaningful sense when one is talking about um, fish, for example. And, and it was simply that point I was trying to make, and I'm sorry if I haven't expressed myself well, and to uh, the noble uh, Baroness Lady Heyman of Ullick, um, uh, Amendments 52 and 53 um, add fish and birds to what is a clause that accepts, it is an exception clause, so accept homo sapiens and fish. It, so it takes them, it does in fact take them out of the scope of the bill. So, um, uh, so th that's all. And, and clearly uh, the noble uh, lady doesn't want them taken out, so that's, she was absolutely fine to express, if not, uh, she, at least she was never going to express support, so in a way it doesn't matter. Uh, but I do want to pick up on what she uh, said about cephalopods and decapod crustaceans um, a, a, as a final point, which is a bit of a commentary on, on much of the bill, because I think we're all agreed that the bill has to say something, that we have, um, we have a bill here which is so empty of content that it would almost be a scandal if it passed in its current uh, circumstances. And today and on previous occasions, we've discussed how it ought to say something about composition. It ought to say something about term limits, which we discussed last time. And perhaps there's a feeling that it ought to say something about cephalopods and um, decapod crustaceans. Now, where we might differ around the committee, because we haven't sufficiently coalesced, is what, what exactly it should say on those issues, but I think many of us sitting here from, from all political parties and groups can probably agree if, with me if I say to the Minister that as the bill stands at the moment, it isn't good enough. And when it comes back at report stage, we expect many things that we have said to be heard and that we improved in a number of respects. And um, I wish him well in his endeavours to, to make it better so that we're all um, as happy with the bill as we have been with him. Does the noble lord wish to um, 